So with that said, um, it was an amazing opportunity for us to collaborate with LRB Beckett and to begin to think about this project and what we could do uh, to try and make it as, as powerful a project as we could. I think one of the important things was looking at the Geary Master Plan, um, which was something that you know, is still uh, intact and will be used and will be the way that the project is derived. But the first phase is this block itself, where the arena was originally placed, is still in the same place, and then there's building one, building two, building three, and building four. So here you can see the site plan of, of the current design uh, that was done with Ellie Beckett and Shop. And one of the key elements is that there is still the room to put all of the buildings around the arena. And that was one of the ways that we were taught, we were told by our client to think about how that could be integrated in the future and not to make any part of this design obstruct what could happen in the future on this site. And so that was a very important thing to us in the way that we began to think about the arena. Um, the, the basics of the planning of the arena, as Greg said, are, are really dovetailed into the site and the access points that have been determined and the issues of both access, transparency, and future building construction that have really been set with the, the, the planning work that's been done in recent years. So uh, just to, to get you oriented, with uh, Atlantic to the north here and, and Flatbush here at the main entrance plaza with a very large opening or portal, if you will, that allows direct access. And we've got some sh section views that can show you that. But direct views into the arena, whether there's an event or not, uh, from the plaza and even from the, from the, the joining streets. And I, I highly suggest that everyone, when you look at the model downstairs, actually go down there and look in from the plaza and you can really see the effect that Bill is talking about. Yeah, we're very, we're very excited about that, that direct participation of what's going on in the building from, from the streetscape. So um, <clears throat> one of the, the ways in which the design has evolved is that you'll see a almost is that octagonal geometry as opposed to an elongated geometry in the primary uh, layout of the seating bowl. And this is what would be called more of a basketball geometry. It's more foreshortened, and it allows us to have the majority of the seats that are the most desirable seats along the, the sideline, the baselines for basketball, bringing the ends by comparison with, say, hockey of over 100 feet closer. So more better seats. And then wherever you see the oh, golden rod, let's call it color, those are retail elements that are directly accessed from the, the sidewalk. This one is the team store for the building. This is a, a soda shop. Um, other key features, I think we've got some other diagrams that show it, but of course this is the main court. This is the uh, stage end of the building. And then this is a practice court. All of those are placed so that the, uh, the event floor of the building is about 25, almost 30 feet below grade, which means this level, the main circulation level of the is right at the sidewalk level, so you're seeing a direct view in. Uh, last thing I'll point out on this view is a, is a loading dock elevator, and trucks, semi-tractor trucks will come in, go down on the elevator, pull into a turntable, and actually rotate within the building, radically minimizing the maneuvering required out of the grade. So as we were taking the forms uh, and the sort of performance of the inside, we started thinking about the form on the outside. And working with L.A.B. Beckett, we, we started to think of a strategy to break down the mass of the building as a whole, like breaking it into sort of three horizontal bands. Um, so one band engages the street, the upper band engages the roof, and the middle band that's glazing really kind of engages the second level um, Promenade line as it goes up there. And so we looked at where all the entries were and views in and out. So as Bill was saying, the main entry coming into the plaza and then the views uh, from the upper level um, and then the other entry points from Atlantic and Flatbush and the connection of retail to the grade began to push and pull the form of the building um, as we moved around it. One of the other things that we felt was really important was making a kind of grand civic gesture um, onto the plaza. 
this sort of canopy that cantilevers out. It has a large oculus in the middle of it so that light can penetrate through. It's more than 30 feet in the air. And it becomes this kind of uh, way of seeing the building as you, as you approach it um, uh, from uh, the west. And that was something that we felt was, was extremely important to engage that, uh, that public plaza. As Bill said, there's the sort of main court here and the practice court that's sunk below. So when you're on the plaza in the soda shop, walking in on either side from the public, you can look down in, and that's where the teams will practice. There will also be available for community events and really see something, which I think that uh, uh, the client sees this as something that really engages the community. Um, so also, as Bill said, there's direct um, uh, visual connections from the plaza and from parts of the, of the pedestrian sidewalk around. You can see that the uh, arena level is, is right on level with the, with the sidewalk. And also then um, uh, you can see directly out from the concourses, um, which is a very important part of it. So that when you are in the arena, you're very much oriented to the direction, what part of the city you're in. And, and the way that we kind of really thought about the three bands was that the sort of upper band really positions the building on the skyline, or how you see it in the urban context. As you get a little bit closer, um, and you're on the sort of street context, this is set back from this portion. This is really at that kind of 40-foot height level. So on the street level, you're sort of getting more of that four or five story fabric context. And then you have tremendous amounts of um, uh, transparency at the ground level so that there's a different kind of experience when you're the pedestrian. And that was really how we tried to think of it, is how is this, how is this building viewed at, at three different scales?